So you from you said you moved from Minneapolis at 25 in 1988. And how was Miami back then? It was phenomenal. It was uh, what we would call the Miami Vice and uh, Scarface days. Uh -huh. That's back when uh, we used to make a lot of movies and films here. And regretfully, we don't do that very well. But why it changed? Any um, uh, like particular reasons? Yes. Or? It changed because it's a business transaction. Mm -hmm. Film industry follows to where there is. Rina aquí, cafecitos. Here, try these coffees. Mm. Thank you. She's very good. She recently joined the company 18 years ago. Está <laughs> bien, Rina? Wow. Thank you. So what happens is that I came here in 1988. It was the Miami Vice and Scarface days. And what happens is that business, usually in the film industry and the movie industry, follows where there's tax credits and tax benefits mm, that mm, yeah, used yeah. to be provided, yet now, regretfully, they're not being provided. So if they are being provided, then what happens is that the movie industry comes in here and makes movies. Mm -hmm. And people like to see their homes and their neighborhoods and their backdrops in the movies. Say, mm -hmm. Oh, I live here. I uh, yeah, yeah, of course. I'm around here. Even if you don't live here, you know, well, like as a vacationer, and you see familiar places that you've seen in the movie, and then you come here. Yes, it kind of uh, gives some good feeling. But uh, okay, interesting. Um, I, I I didn't know that. It was kind of that popular back then. It's a government, they do change those tax credits? State. State, state, okay. So it's pretty much not up to the city, it's up to the state, state the governor. Yes. Yeah. Is there any cons from that? Do you know? Like, of course, I understand they bring more people, I guess they spend more money here, uh, they create jobs, but is there any like negative side of this? Do you know? But it's just why they stop doing it? I'm just trying to... Well, they look at it from a business transaction standpoint uh -huh. and they think that if they can make money off of it. But sometimes yeah. you don't make any money off of the movies. Yeah. But what you do is it gives you just purely background advertising. Mm -hmm. Like credibility, right? Credibility as well. One of the reasons I came to Florida was because I liked, I remember the movie, it was Miami Vice uh, show with Phil Collins playing, mm -hmm. I can feel it in the air tonight. Uh, Mm -hmm. I was riding my motorcycle and I said, you know what? It's getting cold in Minneapolis. I'm going to move to Miami. It's like you. You're from Russia. I, I moved first to North Carolina. I stayed there, stayed there for one year. And that's what I did as well. Like I was 25. No, not, hold on, not 25. I was 21 back then. And the same thing. It was kind of cold there. And uh, I decided to go there. Right. Because okay. there's only one location in uh, lower 48, which has subtropical weather. Yeah. which is here in Florida. And if you have that kind of a destination in the United States of America, mm -hmm. and if you desire to live in the United States of America in some place that has good quality of life, mm -hmm. good quality of environment, you will come here. You are more productive when there is more sun. You are more productive when there is more light. There's, you are more productive when you have more days that you can work mm -hmm. so that you have that opportunity uh, to work more. There's more daylight. Mm -hmm. There's more time to work. And the quality of life that you have when you have time off is better. Yeah. Yeah, you can go true. to the beach. Mm -hmm. You can go to the bay. Mm -hmm. You can have a hamburger sitting on a dock. Mm -hmm. You don't need to spend a yeah. lot of money. You can go to Monty's or you can go to any kind of uh, food and beverage along the river and have a good quality of life. As I would say, I would rather be a bum in Miami mm -hmm. <laughs> than to be a bum in Minneapolis, mm -hmm. which is where I spent my teenage years and early 20s. Uh, I see like it's just my observation. I don't know, maybe correct me if I'm wrong. But um, like it, once I walk into, <laughs> like once I saw those roses, right, and everything looks more as the family business, you know, in a good way as also you mentioned that you have like, people working with you for like <laughs> yeah. 18 years and also everything that you have here inside of the office, it does not feel, it does not feel like a corporate at all, you know, it does feel more like that a family vibe. And um, 
I like it. I love it, to be honest. Look, at the end of the day, people come here to work. This is a company that has been in existence for decades. Mm -hmm. um, it has my name on the door, but uh, at the end of the day, it's run by people, by tens of people. Mm -hmm. And in the construction industry, it's hundreds of people. And when you look at the overall footprint that we do in Florida and or other locations on an annual basis, mm -hmm. a lot of people work on our buildings and pour concrete and do electrical work and do interiors work and finishes and, you know, put the staples and the mm -hmm. jeans on the wall. Mm -hmm. So it, all of that exercise and work creates more work for the environment, for the people here because Florida is a unique destination. It's not only sea, sun, and sand. It is also technology and environment. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is also hospitality and, uh, and hospitals. Mm -hmm. We have genetics, we have technology, we have a lot of, like the clients that you refer to me, right? They're not real estate people, they're in other businesses. Yep. They want to come here and have a good quality of life. And that's what we can do here. I think that's the most important thing that we can do here. You're a real estate broker, but because of your background and who you are, you're able to communicate with people because the buyers are not people from Florida that you sell mm -hmm. to on a daily basis. Most of them are not. Yeah, most of them are not. Most of them are not even American, mm -hmm. meaning being born in the United States of America. You were not born here. Mm -hmm. I was not born here. The photographer, where were you born? Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan, right? So when you're dealing with people from around the world, Far East, Middle East, Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan, I got mm -hmm. half a dozen Turks working in there, right? And so you have that kind of environment here in Florida, which attracts the majority of the population. If you come to the United States of America and you say, I want to live in the United States of America, then Florida is one of the best places to live. Mm-hmm. And in Florida, you have a variety. You can live in Palm Beach. You can live in Broward County, Fort Lauderdale. We have the Four Seasons in Fort Lauderdale. Mm -hmm. We have Celine going on. We have projects going on in Miami Beach. We have Billionaire's Beach, as we call it now, where we're building the, um, whether it is the, right now we're building the Ritz residences on the beach. Which one? The... Um, it's the new project with uh, Douglas Elliman with Oh, yeah, uh, we're Frederick. actually discussing one of the units, three bedrooms to right. purchase right now, yeah. With Frederick? Yeah, with Frederick and Pietro. And Pietro, yeah. right? And again, Frederick, where's Frederick from? He's not from yeah. Miami, right? He's not from the States as yeah, well. Yeah. As well. But he understands the market deeply. Mm -hmm. And people like that is what make Florida successful. Yeah, that's true. And uh, people buy that. People buy our design experience and knowledge and bring us to Abu Dhabi, mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia, Angola, Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan, Baku, we build everywhere. And that is something that makes us special here in Florida. We are the, one of the most international states, cities, mm -hmm. Miami especially, in the whole law 48. And so the good quality of life that you have here it's just phenomenal. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's great to go skiing and yeah, yeah, of course. in Aspen. But you have that option to live here. I, I always say it's, uh, it's good to have Miami as a base, you know, to spend Some like best. six, seven, eight months in here. And then you can go to like Europe or New York, Hamptons, or as you said, skiing somewhere like a couple of times. Look, I grew up in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I love mm -hmm. ice fishing on Lake Calhoun, right? Mm -hmm. I love going to the historic town of Stillwater on the Mississippi. But at the end of the day, to have an ongoing, continuous, good quality of life, especially as you get older, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you want to be in a subtropical weather if you can. And the only subtropical weather in the lower 48 in the United States of America is Florida. Mm -hmm. So I believe in the potential growth going forward of Florida more so than ever before. Um, you can live on the water in a very reasonable um, house and uh, have a good quality of life. Or in California, you can live and see the water, yet you are physically three-dimensionally removed mm -hmm. from the Pacific, right? 
So those are the kind of things that um, help the majority of the population to come here. And I think it will continue to do so and help people like you to sell real estate on an ongoing basis. So people who want to come here to Florida, Mm -hmm. plus the businesses that we have, the technology, the genetics we're starting Mm -hmm. here, the environmental, Citadel and other companies, Founders Fund, all these companies are coming Mm -hmm. here. Just artificial intelligence companies coming here to Florida more so than ever before because we have the brain power here. You know, if we get more brain power from Kazakhstan and and get you from Russia and get me from Minneapolis, the collection of the brain power is what people come here and invest in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I was actually, I think two weeks ago at one of the launch of one of the projects, it's called uh, Rome. And um, so it's a combination of the Zoom oh. and uh, Telegram and a couple of chats. So we have kind of online meetings, but it's uh, your virtual office. And there was a lot of a lot of interesting guys, and this is one of the companies they um, they gonna they have a, um, headquarters here, and they launched it here in Miami. And it was really I was really excited to see so many guys bullish on uh, tech guys there in the tech. They are bullish on Miami, and they say they uh, Miami has a great potential. Um, and, but as from from their words, you know, we have we them. We have to do a lot of work, you know, to make sure that others people is going to come as well to continue to come from the tech industry in particular. And we've seen that trend. Yeah. yeah and I can agree with you. It's continue. It's, um, lately for the last three years, it's very interesting. Three, four years to see, uh, how Miami changed, like the, uh, I would say with the brains, as you mentioned, from different uh, states, countries, different, uh, uh professions, you yeah. know. Uh, look, it's like we do a project which, like the surf club mm-hmm. in Surfside. I remember when I designed yeah. it in 2012. I, oh, sorry for interruption, but Anytime. I'm now in discussion, uh, discussion with the uh, guys from uh, surf club at uh, Telluride. You know, then uh, yes. Nadim, he's going to build it. We're probably going to uh, get a couple of units in there. Um, so uh, you're familiar about it as of well? Of course. Right? That's a great project. And he was the first one to come and do the surf club. And, you know, he has never built anything. Mm-hmm. And so people were skeptical. So that was his first project here in Miami? Yeah. Wow. He actually okay. got involved in a project that we previously did called the Capri. Mm-hmm. Capri, uh, the one in the South South Beach, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's a good project. Too. We preserved an Igor Polovetsky building, which is mm-hmm. a two-story building on the north side. We built the Igor? Is Igor Polovetsky. Igor Polovetsky. He's like you. He also came from Eastern Europe. Oh, yeah? Cause about 100 years like, ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where you came in the, you know, in the 2010s, he came in the 1950s. Okay. Who was it? Do you know? Because He's an architect. Architect, okay. He came in here and uh, he built uh, projects. And one of the buildings that we did, the Capri, we preserved that structure and we built a new 14 story building next to it, which is the mm-hmm. Capri condominium, mm-hmm. as you know it. Yep. And then we had some square footage left over. So we built a smaller building to the south. Mm-hmm. Yet there, the design opportunity was that height is a restriction. So we dug down and we put the parking efficiently below grade. Mm. So you drive along the street and the parking is below grade. And then you see a beautiful building designed on the bay. Mm -hmm. And when we did that building, nobody really looked at Lincoln Road or Biscayne Bay like they're looking at it now. Mm -hmm. Now you're looking at it and saying, oh, my God, it's $1,000, $2,000 a foot. But then we looked at it and we said, oh, we'll be lucky to get $500, (laughs) $600 a foot. But we restored that whole district and we buried the parking which goes under the roadway Mm -hmm. and it also gave people in the neighborhood and our buildings an opportunity to walk along the water along the waterfront Mm -hmm. bay which is a prelude to what it is that we're doing in edgewater Mm -hmm. and that became a very nice destination for the termination of lincoln road on the bay and now we are working as we said on lincoln road on the beach right which has a beautiful termination with the Ritz residences. Um, and that continues on to be a district like 
let's call it billionaire beach, right? Mm -hmm. you, you have billionaire bunker, which is Indian Creek as we call it now, and you have billionaire beach, which is the Ritz, the Raleigh, mm -hmm. the Shore Club, Auberge, yeah. Auberge, which are very, you know, between the Auberge and the Rosewood and the Ritz, you have a district that mm -hmm. is then being created. It is no different than what we did in Surfside mm -hmm. for Nadim. We did the surf club. We restored the structure. We built two new ones. We floated a hotel in the middle. Then we took the same thought process and we did the seaway next door to the north. We mm -hmm. restored the seaway. And then we used that as an entrance to the new building, which people like and they pay a top dollar for. We're now doing the building to the south. Uh, what is it? Surf house. Mm -hmm. Surf house is a very elegant structure adjacent to Arte. So what you have is you have a compilation of structures and various architectural designs and styles that we create and create a lifestyle. So some people like the look of the crystalline volumes on the surf club and some people like the stone materiality that we use in Seaway and Arte. Everyone is different. Mm, yeah. So, you know, you different strokes for different folks, as they say. And that's what we specialize in doing. Yet you have to have a high caliber of design high caliber of uh, finishes, high caliber of floor plans, of layouts that work. Uh, the site plan has to work. It's like you sitting here adjacent to me. We're from different backgrounds mm. and different DNA, but God willing and hopefully our parts are in the same way and they're in the right place, whether it's the heart or the lungs or the kidneys. Um, and then that makes us work correctly and efficiently on a daily basis. The same thing with the master plans and the flow plans that we do. They create the site, they create the maximization of the value. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we did in Capri. That's what we did in uh, Surfside. That's what Capri we do. Capri is one of the projects that I uh, looked into myself to get a uni there, I can tell oh, you. Oh yeah? Yeah, it's good. I, I like the location and it's one of the best buildings, boutique building and it's very well preserved, you know, when you go there you see the design in there it's not sometimes i can tell you from my experience since i'm <laughs> into real estate right sometimes there is a building been built just to i guess uh, sell it out right but sometimes building been built for end users buyers to use it to enjoy it after 5 10 15 years you know they not they getting old um, by the time right but by design, they're not really getting old, you know. And Capria, I think it's one of those buildings when you come inside and you don't feel like it's a building already, what, like more than 10 years, right? I think you're right. I think, look, if you design it properly, buildings are like people. They get better with age. Mm -hmm. um, Capri is a good example. We across the water, we did the Grand Venetian mm, okay. as well. It has a great location, a great... <laughs> I look at that building too. <laughs> there you go. I guess I followed you. <laughs> you Well, you like the... All your projects. You know, you like the DNA and you like the plans and they feel good for mm. you, right? They work. The, the, yeah. the concept of it feels good. And whether we do luxury condos or we do... I'll give you an example. We get a lot of compliments on a project that we designed in Overtown. Mm -hmm, okay. And when you come at a Red Rooster and you look across, there's a very nice building called it's Lyric. Like stories, right? Like exactly. Five or six something. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Lyric yeah, Plaza. I know that one too. And people say, "Oh, that's a condominium." Oh no, it's a rental. Mm -hmm. oh, no. It's affordable housing. It's not. It's not even a workforce. It's affordable housing, which is subsidized. Mm -hmm. And it's a collection of multiple buildings around the green space, which has um, Lyric, uh, the historic Lyric Theater on the south side. And we create essentially a destination, a park, a district, a mm -hmm. community. And other people get attracted to it. They come downstairs, they can go to Red Rooster, they can mm -hmm. get on public transportation, they can work in downtown Miami. And it's on streets that then bifurcate and connect all the way to the bay. You can walk on 11th Street or 10th Street or just mm -hmm. walk straight to the water, to the Biscayne Bay and have a good quality of life. And that's what makes a big difference is that as an architect, as architecture, you understand your environment, you understand your, your position, your situation, how you're sitting, right? And how do you maximize that value? And that's what we do. Mm -hmm. That's how we make money for people. People like you follow and understand and like it, but don't really have the global thought process. How did it come about? 
Why is Capri building tilted in so many degrees to maximize the views and the orientation to the sun, which rises in the east and sets in the west? It's quite nice. But mm -hmm. if you sometimes tilt yourself a few degrees, that makes all the difference in the world. It's like going to a concert, right? You can sit, you can buy a ticket, mm -hmm. but then you say, ah, oh, shoot, I'm sitting behind a column or I have the, <laughs> no. Yeah, you need to have the right seat and you can be high and you can have a great view and you don't need to be on the 50 yard line, mm -hmm. but I can tilt you and angle you in a certain way. And that's what we do. We did a house for a very well-known Floridian and he was buying a house on North Bay Road. And the houses on North Bay Road, you know, they're all like parallel to the property line. And so he came to me and said, oh, Kobe, I can buy the property to the south. I said, buy it. He goes, oh, don't tell me to just buy it. It's five million dollars. It's a lot of money. I said, buy it. Because the value is there. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, explain to me why the value is there. And I said, well, you know, his name is Wayne. Said, Wayne, mm -hmm. if I tell you what I will do if you control that property, and you do not control that property in the future, you will be disappointed. You will not be as happy having the knowledge of what you were not able to achieve. Very competitive, very smart individual. And so he came to me a, a week later and said, I locked it up. Now <laughs> show me what you were thinking. Because yeah. locking it up is a due diligence period. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cost any yeah. money. It costs time. And time, obviously, is the most valuable commodity that we have in life. And so I showed him that he can take the house that normally would have been facing the water, which is perfectly fine. But since he has the property, now I can tilt it. See, even the photographer, the videographer, is looking, <laughs> he's paying attention to me, Mr. <laughs> Kazakhstan. I tilted it 20 degrees mm -hmm. instead of just straight west to the southwest. Oh, the sun rises Different, in the east. Yeah. But now I have a view, a better view of downtown Miami mm -hmm. for my living room, for my kitchen. I can make my cafecito at the bar. I can turn around and have a glass wall and boom, I'm looking at the 50 yard line of downtown Miami. Oh, that's very nice. And by doing that, not only do I have that, but now I also have a facade mm -hmm. that faces to the north west. And then you go, oh, now I have more glass. So the value starts to increase, plus the layout inside is better. Mm -hmm. I open up the door, the front door. Now I rotate the house. So I have a piazza in the front, a circle. And instead of just coming in and going, oh, wow, I'm home, honey. I turn around and I open up the front door and I go, wow, I see downtown Miami. And that is a value that can only be achieved by having a macro understanding mm -hmm. and creates the value in the house, in the real estate, but most important, creates a value in the quality of life that you live mm -hmm. every day. So every day you walk along parallel to the view to downtown Miami. Now, if you were not That's able to understand it, if you were not able to achieve it, you didn't have it in the first place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you didn't have it, or if you just said, uh, you know, I'll go hire an architect and he makes me the plans. And many plans people come to me and I say, no, why do you have these plans like that? Because that house specifically had a south property line and a north property line. And many people don't pay attention. They just align it with the setback. Mm -hmm. But sometimes if you follow that setback or you tilt it a little bit, like I'm looking at you, it gives you the boom wow effect. It's like making a movie. It's like mm -hmm. the video guy. He put the light here so it shines on us on a certain light he can see. And he can carry that message to the camera that I'm telling to the people who will be watching this and say, I'm going to call up Dennis because he's talking to Kobe and he can maximize the value mm -hmm. on my real estate, on my architecture, on my design, on my quality of life. That's what we do here every day. It was nice to meet you today, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.